welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you this spring makeup look and I'm just so excited. I wanted to do something soft and romantic looking with glowing skin and I tried a bunch of new products in this video that I have never tried before so that's really fun too. I just wanted to do something that would be easy to recreate but still glam and soft at the same time if that makes any sense at all. But anyways, I hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial and let's just get started. Priming the eyelids, I'm going to take Max Paint Pot in Soft Ochre and just start applying this to the eyelid to cover up and cancel out any veins or redness to prep for eyeshadow. I'm taking the Makeup Geek eyeshadow in White Lies. It's just a matte white eyeshadow and I'm using my Sigma E50 brush to just set the paint pot that I applied on my eyelid. Now I'm taking the color Sorbet. This is also by Makeup Geek and I'm going to take my Sigma E40 brush and just buff this into the crease. This is going to be a very light transition shade. I always like to start off my looks by adding a little bit of shadow right into the crease because this is just going to immediately create dimension to the eyes. Taking the Makeup Geek eyeshadow and Cupcake, I'm going to use my Morphe M562. This is just a really small tiny little um, blending brush and go directly into the crease with this shade. Sort of like a mauve dusty rose pink shade. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a Morphe M433 brush and just build up the product a bit more. Still keeping this right in the crease. I don't want to bring this product up too far. I just want to make sure that you guys notice that I have brought this all the way from the outer corner to the very inner corner. Sometimes when I blend I stop about halfway. This time for this technique that I'm going to be doing today, I brought it all the way in and you'll see why in a second. So now I'm just going to take a little bit more of that sorbet color which is that lighter peachy shade and just blend right over where cupcake ends. Just to make sure that everything is nice and seamless. I'm taking the Sigma E57, it is a small firm shader brush. So we're going to be doing the halo technique today which means we're going to be focusing this product on the inner and outer corner of the eyes and then doing a pop of color on the center of the eyelid. So I'm only focusing this right on the inner corner and on the outer corner of the eye. And I'm just building up the product. You're going to have to dip back into it a couple times to get it to the pigment that you want it to be at. This is why it was important to take that crease color all the way from the inner to the outer crease because you want to make sure that when you add these colors on the lid that everything blends nice and seamlessly. You definitely want to try and leave a space open on the center of the lid that way when you go in with the center color it really pops. Now I'm going to be taking Makeup Geek's Foiled Eyeshadow in Starry Eyed. As you can see it's just like a beautiful sort of rose gold shade. It is just absolutely gorgeous and I'm taking my Sigma E55 brush picking up a little bit of product and then I'm going to spritz my brush with some MAC Fix Plus and then apply it to the eyelid. And the reason why I'm spraying my brush with MAC Fix Plus is because it's just going to intensify the foiled eyeshadow. You'll see what I mean in a second. And so now obviously I'm placing this right on the center of the lid where I didn't apply cupcake. This technique is going to make the eyes look super rounded and really wide and big. So that is why I'm doing the halo effect. I want my eyes to look really bright and open and fresh for spring. Once I have that color packed on, I'm going to take a little bit of Whimsical, which is just a lighter pink. As you can see, it's a super pale, frosty pink, and I'm just going to lightly add this to the top of it just for an extra pop. You can see the two shades here next to each other. Starry Eyed is in the front, and then in the back is Whimsical, so I just want to add a little bit more of a pink. And I'm just going to go back one more time through the crease and make sure that everything is nice and blended. Moving on to eyelashes, I'm going to be trying out these Nisha lashes from the Coco line. Okay, so lashes are on, and I actually am really liking these. They're a lot more soft and natural looking than I thought they would be. They're just very long. But I didn't plan on doing any liner, but I think I'm going to have to because the lash glue that I'm using is dries down to a black color. And I got some on the eyelid, so I'm just going to try and do the tiniest line that I can possibly do using the NYX Black Liquid Liner. So even though I wasn't planning on applying eyeliner, I actually really love how this turned out. I just made sure not to do a wing and I wanted to keep the thickness towards the middle of the eye because that's what's really going to give you that bright, doll-eyed, big round eyes effect. So that's what I did. Now I'm just going to quickly curl my lashes and apply a few coats of mascara. 
The mascara that I'm using is the Too Faced Better Than Sex. Usually I would go in with a nude eyeliner for the waterline, but I just got a ton of these beautiful ColourPop um, eyeliners, and I have a ton of pretty colors, so I want to try this mint one with the look. I feel like mint and pink always go together, so I'm taking the color Zulu. I'll just swatch it on my hand for you so you guys can see how pretty it is. Such a pretty mint green shade. I'm going to apply this in the waterline. And I'm actually really surprised with this color because it is so creamy and I feel like a lot of times when things are super pigmented and they're colorful, they're dry. But this one is not. This is beautiful. Okay, so right now that is it for the eyes. I'm so excited to move on to the face because I'm trying out a ton of new products for the first time in this tutorial. So I can't wait to see how I'm liking them. And I'm going to start off by taking the Makeup Forever Smoothing Primer. This is not a new product to me. I've had this for a while. Um, but I'm just going to prime my skin. Now that my skin is primed and my pores are filled in, I'm going to try using this new Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. This is the liquid version of Opal. And I'm just going to dot this to the high points of my face. So right to the tops of my cheekbones and nose. I'm going for a really glowy look to the skin today. So I'm going to try doing this extra step. I'm just going to use my beauty blender to blend this out. I'm so excited to be trying out the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I purchased this for the Sephora VIB sale and I haven't used it yet. So I'm really excited to try this. I've been dying to get my hands on this and I finally have it. So I can't wait to use it. I hope this shade works for me too. Oh my gosh, it looks like literally the perfect color for my fake tan. I got the shade 5.75. I'm just going to dot this onto my face. So my first impression is it gives just a really nice natural glow to the skin. It's not like super dewy or super luminous, but it does give a natural glow to the skin. And I would say it's about a medium coverage. You can still see where I have some scarring here from previous breakouts. You can still see that peeking through the skin. So I would say it's a medium coverage, but that's okay because I'm going to go in with concealer. To correct the darkness underneath my eyes, I'm using this Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. I love this stuff. This has totally become a holy grail product for me. I just absolutely love it. It definitely brightens up the under eyes. As you can see, it's just completely eliminated the dark circles under my eyes. So love this. I'm just going to take my beauty blender and... Blend that in a little bit. To highlight, I'm going to be taking my Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. This is my favorite concealer of all time. This is in the shade Light Warm, so it's probably going to look very bright on me now that I have self-tan on, but I need to get a different shade. I haven't gotten one yet, so I'm just going to work with it. And I'm just going to apply this how I normally do, right underneath the eyes, to highlight onto the chin, down the center of the nose. And of course, up onto the forehead. To set the concealer, I'm going to use my RCMA No Color Powder. This is such a great setting powder because it's so light on the skin. It doesn't leave the skin feeling heavy or cakey or anything, so I just love it. To set the rest of my foundation, I'm going to try another new product. This is the Laura Geller Balanced and Brightened Foundation. And it looks like this. I picked up mine in the shade medium for when I have a self tan on. Ooh, it smells good too. I heard Wayne Goss talking about this in a video and this is why I bought it because he said it makes your skin have like a luminous finish so it's not a matte powder. For bronzer, I'm taking one of the new Makeup Geek bronzers. This is in the shade Bad Habit. And I'm just going to use my Sigma F05 brush to do a little bit of contouring and bronzing. Just going to bronze up onto the temples as well, bring it up onto the forehead. This is a beautiful bronzing shade. I feel like it just looks very natural in a way. And as always, taking my Sigma E25 and just bronzing up the sides of the nose. And when you apply too much, just take whatever brush you use to set your concealer and just sort of blend over that and diffuse the color. 
I'm taking a baked blush by Milani. This is in the shade number one, Dulce Pink or Dolce Pink, however you want to say it. It's a really pretty color. And I'm going to take my Morphe E4 brush to apply this to the face. I have tried so many times to skip blush, but I feel like it just completes a look. I just can never skip it. For my highlight today, I'm going to be taking my Mary Luminizer by The Balm, and this is what it looks like. Just a really pretty champagne-y sort of looking highlight. And you guys know what to do. Right on the high points of the face, I'm going to be applying this. So to the tops of the cheekbones, nose, you can do a little bit down the bridge of the nose as well. Even going to highlight the chin as well because I want to look super glowy. Going back to the eyes, I'm taking just some more of the shade Cupcake by Make a Peak and applying this to the lower lash line. The mascara that I'm going to use for my lower lashes is the Rimmel Lash Accelerator. For some extra shine, I'm just going to take a little bit more of MAC Fix Plus and just spray it all over my face. For lipsticks, I'm so excited because I finally purchased my first ever YSL lipsticks. So I think I'm going to use one of these today. They're both sort of pinky shades. Let's see. This is the number seven. It is like a super pink. So that is number seven. Beautiful. Or we have number one. Ooh, I think I'm going to go with this one here. I'm going to go with this color right here. Let's try it. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. So creamy. So I ended up just mixing the lip colors and this is the result that I got and I ended up loving it. I really love how this look turned out. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm so excited to be filming more makeup looks. I purchased a ton of new makeup over the past couple of weeks that I've just been dying to use here on my channel and I wanted to use so many more new products in this video but there was just no way that I could include them because I would literally have piles of makeup on my face if I were to try and use everything so definitely be looking forward to a ton of new makeup tutorials but yeah that is it thank you guys so much for watching I really hope that you enjoyed this if you did enjoy this tutorial please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos in the future and yeah thanks again and I look forward to seeing you soon bye